Hey guys and welcome to our next tutorial. Today we will talk about creating a director ready template using the example of a very easy name super and some simple animations that will serve as the fade in and fade out animations. To start off we need to set up the static graphics first which will be in our case a simple gradient rectangle with a gray as color and an alpha value from 100 to 0 and a 2D text node that uses a alpha effect to make the animation of it more interesting. The template engine is based directly on the Venta state engine of its keyframe animations so to build a director ready template you will most likely need to build a keyframe animation and make its control property accessible from outside the scene. So we will need a keyframe animation which we will add the two properties that we want to animate to. So let's add the progress property of the alpha effect and the scale x property of the axis of our gradient rectangle to make it fade in from the left. We will add three states to our animation node which will be named start. The second one will be named like our template is named so let's name it name super and the last one will be end. These states now represent our template when it's off and on screen. To animate it properly we will need to add connections between those states and between the on-screen state to itself so you can queue two of them directly behind each other. We will now need to tell the template engine which of these states is the start state, which is the end state and which state is on screen. Uh, to do so you will need to change the type of the states which you can do in the properties like here or just by pressing the P button to define an on-screen state like presented or the E button to define an end state. Use the B button to define a start or begin state. When you now animate those uh, connections you will have a simple animation but still not a template that is usable for the director. To do so we will need to expose the control property of our animation to outside of the scene. Open the scene data editor in the view menu or by simply pressing F12. And now just add the control property of our animation by dragging and dropping. You will have noticed that as soon as you added the control property to the scene data, our animation icon turned yellow and the connections between our states of the animation became arrows. To test this template you can now click onto the arrow over here and on name super to fade it in or deactivate to fade it out again. So when you now tell the template engine to fade in our name super template, it will begin with the start state, find its way to the present state or in our case the name super state and use the animation of the connection here. And when you now tell the template engine to queue another template, which is not a name super template, it will find its way to the end state, use the animation of this connection, and then start again with the begin state of the new template. Now, as you can see, our template works just fine, but as a designer you will always have to consider some possibilities for the operator of the director, to change some properties of your template, like the color of the rectangle or the text. Now the data view of our animation editor comes in use. You can simply drag and drop every wanted property into these columns here, like the color of our gradient rectangle, the color of our text, 
or the text itself. You will now have to rename and group all the data channels in a proper way. And uh, keep in mind that these data channel names are only used by vendors and won't be visible. But the label names will be visible inside the vendors director. So use names that are recognizable for the operator of the director. You can also define default values in the properties of the data channels. Click on them and then just change the values to the wanted ones. When you now change the data and do a transition from the template to itself, you will notice that the data is changed directly at the beginning of the animation. To prevent this from happening, you need to tell Ventus where to change the data by setting data markers on the corresponding points of time in the connections where this may appear. So just go to the timeline view, choose the slice where it happens and the point of time and just click on the set data marker icon or use the M button instead. When you now repeat the transition from earlier, you will notice that Ventus will change the data at the proper point of time. To make recognizing the templates inside the director easier, you may add thumbnails to them. To do so, you will have to click on the present state of your template change the thumbnail area. You may make it visible by clicking on show thumbnail area. So you see those yellow borders over here. And when you're finished, you will just have to click create thumbnail. Our template is now fully working and has several features to make the use of it inside the director more comfortable for the operator. But let's say we want to add an optional second line that you may add to the first line of our name super, but that may not appear on screen by itself. To do so, we will add the static graphics again at first. We will simply copy and paste our existing bar because it looks similar to the one we want now and adjust its properties. Now we will do everything exactly the same way we did with our first line, except for one thing. We won't add the control property of our second line animation to the scene data, since we want to make it dependent from our first template. So we need to add it to the data of our first template, like we did with the other properties that we wanted to change inside the director. To do so, you will just have to drag the control property of the second line animation, hover it over the name super animation until its data view appears and drop it like any other property into it. To test our sub template, you can use the little arrow over here again. And you will notice that the template will just act as expected. This closes this tutorial. You should now have an idea of how to use the template engine of Ventus. But still, there are many other features that you can use to build an impressive and easy to use show with Ventus and Ventus Director like adding multiple sub-templates, adding visuals as data channels, using project data and so on. This is it for now. I hope I will see you in our next tutorial which will be about logic inventors.